well, hello from me as well. It's uh, nice that you found the way to this room after lunch on the second day and after many other exciting presentations offered here. As I said, uh, my name is Reinhard Eisel and I come from Celum. And over the next uh, over the next forty hours, I would like to tell you what drives us and uh, what we uh, provide as solutions for our customers. Uh, I would like to uh, start um, uh, by introducing you to Celum. For those of you who don't uh, know Celum, the print cu uh, customers uh, and uh, ourselves, we ha uh, have some joint customers and uh, uh, we come from Austria. Maybe you can hear it from my accent. We are headquartered in Linz, Austria, with offices in Vienna, and uh, customers in the Dach region, but also in North America and uh, Southeast Asia. Briefly on myself at Celan, I am the chief product officer, so I am the uh, person responsible for the pro product. Since uh, 2011, I've been with Celum, started with in project business, uh, introduced Celum with many, many customers together with and, uh, other systems such as PIMS and integrated into print. And for two years, uh, I'm now responsible for the product. We have been around for uh, 20 years, basically. Uh, as I said before, uh, healthy growth, uh, no external investors. This means our vision and our founder have uh, no exit uh, planned. And we currently have uh, uh, about 100 people across all locations. Uh, what is also important to us is uh, sustainable governance so not only for customers being a long-term partner but uh, also um, being sustained ourselves we have uh, a huge e-vehicle pool and a 200 kilowatt solar roof uh, panel and uh, this also drives us uh, as a company to be sustainable and of course, uh, this is our pride, our customers, uh, uh, the the assisted uh, verticals from life sciences, pharmaceuticals to manufacturing and retail. And uh, some customers are here like Rohe um, that we look after together with other colleagues. Well, I would like to uh, start by explaining what when we speak uh, to our customers what we understand by a good customer journey. A good customer journey is uh, usually about uh, uh, creating the most effective uh, content uh, for each touch point along the customer journey. Point number one as a shopper, I want to see my expectations fulfilled. Um, you always have to think about it. Uh, if I take a deliberate decision to shop with taco fashion to buy my garments, then I have certain expectations regarding price and quality and the general experience when I go shopping there. Of course, my expectations uh, uh, would be different if I uh, went to shop at Peak and Kloppenburg in Linz uh, because there's a boss department. And if I shop there, then of course I have completely different expectations. What counts is simply that I am happy with my investment if my expectations are met. A second point, as a shopper and as a consumer, I want to have a satisfactory customer journey. What does satisfactory mean? I talked about uh, expectations, but what shoppers don't want is the Maya's remorse. They want to be sure that they've taken the right decision. So in order to take this decision, I have to be well informed and to see that my expectations are fulfilled. Third point, 70%, this is what Gardner says, 70% of uh, uh, loyalty, are brand loyalty, are actually attributed to the product. Of course, the brand is important as uh, 
to to ensure recognition levels but the brand loyalty comes from the product and the experience you have when shopping it just briefly um, an excursion uh, how the digitalization process has developed over time for online shoppers I did my research in 1994 the first retail shopping process was performed in the World Wide Web before there were some online shopping processes but and the World Wide Web. The first process took place in 1994. You're familiar with this gentleman, probably with less hair now. But since 95, Jeff Bezos um, uh, initiated uh, Amazon, and he started off with uh, merchandise that's easy to store, easy to dis. Uh, uh, to describe a simple experience, but nevertheless, very successful. I have had uh, at my account, uh, my Amazon account, since late 1998. So uh, um, immediately when it became available in Europe. In 1996, quite exciting, um, uh, because we've booking.com today, because they no longer sell physical products, uh, books, for instance, no. They sell services, they sell an experience, a trip, a voyage. Uh, so they have to fulfill completely different expectations uh, when it comes to describing their services and the experiences when booking. Uh, so that I can actually take the trip with the right expectations. So uh, raising and meeting the right expectations. Uh, 98 PayPal. This, of course, makes uh, um, means a major progress uh, um, because now you can complete transactions online as well. And then in 2000, this was again a watershed. Um, how do I drag people, bring people to my offers apart from adverts, radio and TV commercials? How do I get there immediately to their navigation. Google AdWords, a mega success. Uh, just thinking of my mother, for instance, she uses the top browser bar uh, simply as a Google search field to get to the pages to find the um, articles she's interested in. So this is directly integrated in the experience right from the outset. Well then, then 10 billion in 2006, Amazon, the development, um, successful Amazon, but this of course killed others. Quelle used to have um, a huge uh, catalog with uh, a big warehouse in Linz in Austria. In 2009, they actually had to file insolvency. Then in 2017, the first uh, interesting experiences um, offered and Instagram initiated Shoppable, for instance. This was one of the first approaches, basically, uh, to um, provide content experience uh, on the screen and, and uh, uh, produce a login. Then uh, uh, we're talking about uh, 218 billion US dollars. Then in 2020, Cash had also filed insolvency. So we can see that uh, customs are changing, habits are changing, and there are companies on the market that simply can no longer serve this market. And where we are we now? 2020, COVID-19 as the big catalyst for digitalization. Horst uh, already briefly alluded to it this morning where companies uh, um, that put the brakes on the IT for years all of a sudden uh, were able to introduce teams within just a few weeks. Well, this is the status quo. How has this developed? How? Uh, where do we come from? Let us briefly look at how we shop or rather, honestly speaking, how we used to shop in the past. There are certain approaches, and one of those models um, is the um, AIDA model, Attention, Interest, Desire, Action. Uh, 
attention, creating attention, Saturn, um, being tight-fisted is cool, um, uh, very focused on TV sets and um, uh, see us in the store, 20% of all TV sets until Friday. This is the classic approach of uh, communicating this in the past and how it also worked. And then, while well, you uh, were successful, the shopper actually followed this uh, call to action, actually enters the store and uh, can try products in store. Ideally, there is even a shop assistant uh, catering to the interpersonal um, element. There's all there's browsing, being inspired. Uh, I well, as an Austrian, you know this. Just looking, just looking. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Kasim uh, Butaka, whether anybody knows him. Or online, um, uh, Amazon. This has been going on for ages. Online, I fill a screen with information, and uh, hoping that uh, the shopper uh, will feel. Um, inspired and uh, by. Of course, um, online is, of course, uh, an issue too. There's lots of screen real estate and I have to make sure that shoppers' expectations are fulfilled, that they can actually take an informed um, decision and does not actually suffer from a buyer's remorse because it finds out that uh, there would have been better offers available. What we see here is an online shop, a web shop that is live of an Austrian uh, sports retailer. And what you can say here, I think, is uh, that the journey is uh, in no way inspiring to buy. I have this is a single image, lots of empty space and the description, I don't know whether you can even read it at the back of the room. Uh, the, it does not describe the product but just the pickup process in case uh, I should uh, decide to buy the bicycle where I can pick it up. This is um, uh, the way we used to shop mobile phones, um, uh, great functionality, It's they're good for quick buys, but so far payments used to be sort of fiddly, but of course there are some people doing it well, Amazon for instance uh, uh, makes uh, payment easy as well. But actually things are working differently these days. Um, we've heard it many times before, omni-channel of course, so I do not have a classic store and a web store and uh, some mobile touch points, but instead I have many touch points. And uh, um, it is important to have omnichannel versus multi-channel because you don't have four separate channels, but you have four integrated channels. And this is what Horst mentioned this morning, giving the example of uh, the uh, higher budget for the SEO, but uh, the better way would have been to uh, actually take a holistic approach, looking at all of the channels at the same time. Now, um, it is not only many channels uh, to cater to, but the process is also different. Because uh, uh, when you remember the AIDA model, this uh, it ends with a call to action and with the shopper really uh, ending up at the physical store. But today, we find that um, the situation is as follows. I find a product attractive, I have the idea of what I want to buy and then uh, I actually go into a store, I find a product attractive there, so I inform myself 
I have looked at the producer's website, maybe I've even visited the website of the online retailer because this was this has made Amazon big because online retailers allow me to exchange and swap ideas with others or I can at least see a rating for the product and I can actively network with others uh, by uh, using Instagram or WhatsApp uh, to contact my contacts, pin my contacts, asking them, what do you think about it? Have you bought this product? So in this uh, purchasing process or in this shopping process, at each of the touch points, the experience has to be right. And then when I can take the decision and take, do take the decision, then in um, this can also be a, a, a digital purchase. I don't buy immediately, I, I first try the product out. And there it is important to collect the right information and provide the, the right experience to fulfill shoppers' expectations. Fulfillment, yes, I buy it, I use the product. Sure. And the process doesn't stop here where the shopper starts using the product and um, not in the age of uh, digital products let's just think of our cell phone we would be very unhappy if we didn't get regular updates simply because I have actually bought this uh, cell phone does not mean does my product experience stops here. So I want to network with the producer even after shopping for it or buying it. This is where feedback loops kick in. Okay, I'll exchange with others. This is also a part of the feedback where I collect information about the product and as soon as I start using the product I can of course share whether I like it, whether my expectations have been fulfilled, how I'm feeling with the product and this is the decisive point. This is where the login takes place between the fulfillment and the service but this is where not where the process stops it, it's, it doesn't help you to have bought the cell phone and not receive any updates. Then I'm not happy with after uh, a care, uh, customer care. And I will actually communicate this to my peers. And this is why the whole process, all of this experience around um, before I actually purchase, plays such an important part in the whole journey and uh, only a p perfect product experience at all of the touch points leads to enthusiasm and hopefully generates new shoppers if all of the feedback loops work well. And if you recap all of this, then we come to what our mission is as Zilum. Together with our customers, for our customers, our mission is to avoid uh, a, an experience like this. Because this is <laughs> economy stupid. What really counts to deliver those product experiences, what really counts is content. And if we say, okay, content, which content? A lot of content, yes. Because if you say you diversify or you personalize and you really actually target products for certain target groups, then you have lots of content. But what you need is lots of high quality content. And comparing th uh, the uh, no-name retail in Austria and our uh, customer Scott Sport here, there is so much more content and so much more high-quality content. There's not just one single photo. There's several views. I can zoom in at the bottom. I see the technologies uh, used with this uh, 
bicycle. There are even videos embedded. So I have this, I have this multimedia component. And you can probably also see it in the uh, top right, the third element for the uh, bicycle. There is a mood video, so I can see the bicycle in use in the forests, uh, jumping across stones, and I can feel what it feels like riding this bike. And this is our ambition. This is what we want to help our customers to project. So what kind of content are we talking about? We said um, certain quality standards have to be fulfilled. So product videos, product uh, photographs, product animations, so far so good. But um, it's also about um, the possibility of a digital experience of the products not the uh, all-round information, which means specifications for bikes and maintenance information or dedicated landing pages for individual products, but more and more 3D views. A big retailer, a customer of ours, is now starting with 3D views in collaboration with the workrooms and experiences for um, end users. Uh, we have in-content shopping. We just saw the uh, Instagram example, Shoppable. Wherever products uh, feature in a different content, um, it, it must be possible to embed the references. Then price comparison tools, then digi content across channels, there we're touching upon the omni-channel topic again. There's somebody in charge making sure that the content works across all of these channels. And I think um, uh, uh, we've already heard about very interesting things um, related to print. Well, product configuration. This is also a topic where the experience must be right. This is for more complex products uh, um, like cars, vehicles. Um, it must be shareable, uh, these uh, content snippets. All of these things, in addition to the classical video, photo, or fact sheet, or maintenance info as a PDF file, all of this will be needed in future to be able to deliver these digital experiences and to make the product digitally experienceable. Yes, um, it is said that uh, the human brain understands visual impressions 60% uh, faster than text. And whoever uh, listen to the presentation by Fabiant, um, will know that uh, I can actually create a visually appealing text and this continues to be important. Nevertheless, visually, um, that is uh, design that's visually appealing is more effective. How do I come to this content now? How do I get this content? Our invitation for our customers is as follows. Look or view content as a supply chain. Whoever wants to uh, buy uh, or have one of those mugs here um, should uh, look at the content supply chain. Great products, so there's a supply chain to get from the wheat grown, threshed, out there in the fields, then delivered. There's a classic way to turn this wheat into spaghettis. There is a supply chain for doing that and there are quality checks, evidently, especially in the food sector, to make sure that what is in those spaghettis uh, is high quality. And this is exactly the ambition you should also have for content, also quality-wise. The content 
that uh, we use for our product experiences. And our offering is uh, the Selum content supply chain. We call it Create Manage Root. This means we have solutions for the create segment. This is where content is generated for the collaborative uh, cooperation with tasking, with workflows, uh, with approvers and uh, with file access and sharing. Uh, there's this drive component. Then uh, there is the central segment of manage. This is uh, basically our central content hub that uh, automatically creates uh, derivatives and actually controls access with authorizations uh, that also provides AI support for keywords uh, and search. And last but not least, we have the third element, root. This is uh, where the content we've generated and managed is delivered to where these experiences, these touch points uh, uh, lie with our customers. So this would be classically an upstream PIM, ERP integration, CMS or um, integration in shop systems and uh, uh, of course also in the, the shop systems, I said this before. Exactly, Celum content supply chain create manage root in order to have the high quality content available that uh, I and actually deliver to my target channels in a um, coordinated manner from BIB to print and web. This is our credo, only perfect uh, product experiences guarantee that uh, shoppers uh, can be familiarized properly with products, especially in times of COVID. Uh, the lockdowns are past, but the shift towards uh, digitalization to uh, shopping decisions that are online only um, make this even more important. And perfect uh, product uh, experiences are only available with perfect product uh, content at uh, all of the touch points of the journey. What uh, do we find when we look at our customers, who our customers are? Well, we can see that we are relevant to the customers who work on premium product uh, uh, content, such as Scott Sports. We are relevant where we're talking about marketing content for big uh, organizations and where we're faced with big volumes. There, our solution is simply spot on. And let's recap, create, manage, root. With this uh, uh, system, um, content can be generated, managed and rooted to actually deliver the perfect experience. When you look at the solution as a whole, then you can actually break it down to six elements. We have a, a classic digital asset management system. We call it uh, uh, DAM, uh, our content hub as the uh, central management hub for all the content in the organization. Then we have the agile collaboration solution workrooms uh, that teams work with uh, to generate the content, also um, supported by workflows and automation in order to do tasking and uh, traceability of uh, small projects. Uh, then online proofing, ad proofer, for instance, then file, sync and share and uh, uh, for our marketplace we have several off-the-shelf uh, uh, systems for upstream or uh, CMS shop uh, solutions. I think uh, this is also what uh, Horst uh, said on the first day. 91% of the product experiences before lock-in are primarily uh, digitally experienced. 
And this is why it is so important to have the right content to actually uh, make this experience as attractive for shoppers as uh, possible. And 77% of shoppers say that uh, products is the main reason for the lock-in. So I have to be able to design my offers in line with shoppers' expectations. And I have to ensure that um, a satisfactory shopping experience is generated so that uh, through the product and the experience, I actually um, uh, boost the brand value. Um, uh, experience creates the lock and only if the experience is right, uh, the shopper will buy. And at the very um, end, this is again Gardner and um, um, looking at the US market. Where will most CMOs uh, focus on? And 51% uh, uh, of the CMOs surveyed in North America said, yes, our focus will be on new digital experiences. Well, to conclude, our invitation, if you don't know us yet, um, actually stop over at our stand, talk to us and, uh, and get your content supply chain moving with Selum. Thank you very much.